Gear Geek. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Mike from Double Driver, and uh, I'm going to show you all my guitars here on uh, on Gear Geek for all access. All right, where to start? Let's see. Um, well, I'll start with my signature series guitar. This is I have three of these now. Um, actually, I actually have four. There are uh, one of them's on its way to, to Germany right now in our storage locker over there. This is the one that you can buy. This is the LTD version of the MS1. Uh, this is a modeled after the uh, custom that I had uh, ESP make me, I think, in 2006. And uh, these are the ones that are for, for sale. It's um, because of the EMG 81s, ebony fretboard. Uh, it's a uh, mahogany body, mahogany neck, uh, which is a little bit different than a lot of guitars you'll buy from ESP. Most of them have maple necks. And uh, one volume, one tone, string through body, and a uh, three-way switch. Pretty straightforward. And uh, come over here, show you. I just got this the other day, which is the custom version, the newest one which is basically the exact same thing, except this one was made in Japan. Um, I do notice that uh, the ebony wood on the fretboard is a little bit different than the one. It's a little bit more of a matte finish. It doesn't have, uh, the other ones seem to have a like, glossy finish on it. This one does not, which I kind of like. And um, I'm not sure why they did, but uh, they put an EMG 89 in the bridge, which is the same thing as an 81 or an 85, I believe but uh, you can split into a single coil by the, the push-pull pot here right here when you're using that pickup. All right, next up is the original, which I have right here. This thing is pretty beat up. I've been touring with this for about five years on every single tour that we've ever done. And uh, this is, uh, this is the one that my signature series is modeled after. And it's pretty much the exact same specs as the other two that I showed you. Alright, moving on. Um, I'll show you my the very first guitar I ever got, which was, I was, I think, eight years old. I pulled this out of the attic today. Um, I don't even think I've opened this case and probably close to 10 years, you can see uh, all the <laughs> 90s era stickers. Yep, and uh, Tower Records, you know, that's where I bought all my C, C you know, back when CDs were popular. And uh, I'm gonna show that sticker to Diodario, I wonder how old that logo is. But anyway, I mean, this thing is an absolute piece of junk. I've got, it. There's honey all over the uh, the guitar case because it had a little bee problem up there a few years ago. But this is, my parents got this for me when I was about eight years old when I first started playing guitar. Um, I started for about a year and then I quit until I was about 10 or 11 because I didn't like my guitar teacher. She wanted me to sing at a recital and I absolutely refused to sing because it wasn't, it wasn't middle enough back then. But as you can see, broken neck which I'm actually thinking about fixing, because I never want to sell a guitar. I mean, it's a piece of junk. It was like $100, I think, when they got it for me back then. And uh, just a crappy little nylon string guitar, but I'll never sell it. Just too much sentimental value behind it. And let's see. My first electric guitar, which I thought had the coolest paint job in the world <laughs> when I was 11 is a Fender Squire. Also broke the neck right here, as you can see. I had some guy glue it for me. At, actually, at the same place where I bought that acoustic, a place called Marshall Music, yeah, somewhere near Torrance, California. But I bought this off my guitar teacher. His name was Brian Doherty, and uh, he was a total metalhead that uh, is uh, the first really good guitar teacher I ever had. He taught me a lot of heavy metal, a lot of Megadeth, a lot of Black Sabbath and stuff like that basically got me off the right foot. But uh, this was the guitar that I played from when I was 11 years old and I, don't, I didn't get another electric guitar until I was um, when I was in college when I was 18 I think. 
And uh, so I played this thing for many, many years. And uh, just like all my guitars, I'll never sell them. Unless I really have to. Uh, my next guitar that I got was a Fernandez Dragonfly that I got through one of my guitar, t uh, my other, one of my other great guitar teachers, this guy named TJ Parker. And uh, he got Fernandez to help me out with a deal with this one. Uh, back in the day when I was with uh, uh, my first band, Sisrot and Grolby, with uh, all the other guys in Double Driver, uh, this is the one that I played. And uh, it's got this you know, famous sustainer pickup on it. It's, uh, I really don't really play it that much anymore. Um, I ran over it with my car after a Grolby practice one day, that's why all this is there. I, uh, it was in a soft case and I leaned it up against my truck and was talking to Jeff or Miller or Berkman about something. Um, I you know, went back to my truck, started backing out, fell over, and I think I ran over it perfectly on this part of the guitar. And that's why I didn't break anything, I just chipped it up a little bit. And, yeah, it, uh, there it is. That was uh, my second electric. And the last... One of the last guitars that I have here that is not an ESP is my first seven string I got. I got this when I was working on a band called No Love Lost in Santa Barbara between when I was in Grolby and Double Driver because I wanted to do some seven string stuff. And I don't really play it. The uh, whammy bar got stuck in there and I tried to pull it out and the whole thing broke off. So I just left it out. It's got the sustainer on it, which is kind of nifty. And uh, yeah. Just the tell you the truth, let me know how it sounds. Last time I plugged it in was many years ago. It doesn't even have a battery in it anymore. <laughs> Goes to show I haven't played it in a while. Alright, moving on. Let's see. What's we got here? It's an interesting guitar. This is a 30th anniversary LTD. I just asked LTD or um, ESP to give me. Um, it's definitely needed of a cleaning. There are frets on there, believe it or not. It's just that they're so black you can't see them. But, um, I, you know, it was around the year when I first started playing EMG, or no, sorry, not EMG, ESPs, and, you know, it was their 30th anniversary, so I asked them to give me one of these, and they were kind enough to give me one. Let's see. Moving on. Uh, some of the next guitars I got were my Eclipses, which are over here. Now, this was the first ESP, not LTD, first ESP guitar I ever got. And uh, um, it's uh, Jeff just actually noticed today, now that we have these all set up, the, uh, the curve. And uh, I think this model is from 2004, yeah. And, uh, you know, it has the four knob configuration, now they have three. Uh, right now I have Duncan Distortions in this guitar, and we use this guitar um, partially for the rhythms on Pray for Villains. And um, we use Jeff's Custom and this for all the rhythms on Pray for Villains, the, the one we did with Logan Mater. And, uh, you know, the, I, they, I guess they had to change the curve on here probably due to... Uh, Something to do with maybe Gibson or something like that. It's the only truth I don't know. But this is also this is a guitar that I played on Ozfest 2004 before I decided to switch to start playing V's. And uh, these are still the same guitars. This one has the MG 81s in it. It's basically the same guitar except it's got the three knob configuration. And then I have a blue Sunburst, or sorry, brown Sunburst over here. And this has a, has Seymour Duncan's uh, JB and a 59 in here. And uh, these are my favorite guitars to play with at home. When I'm sitting down, sometimes these are not the most comfortable to play when you're in the studio or recording or just practicing or whatnot. So those are the ones I always prefer to play. All right, let's uh, then moving on. I uh, when we were on Ozfest with. On 04, God forbid, was and us were doing off shows, and I'll never forget. I was watching him one day, and um, Doc was playing the Red Eclipse, and Dallas was playing one of these, and 
I just thought that Dallas just looked pretty badass playing a V, so I decided to get one. And uh, this is Dave Mustaine's signature series when he was with ESP. I played this for quite a bit. All through, uh, I remember, Sounds of the Underground, all through 2005, I believe. EMG 81's, um, pretty damn big V. And uh, no, I don't really play it all that often anymore. I like my V better. You want to do the uh, other Mustaine one, the um, action? Yeah. Um, yeah, and so that's the other signature series. Uh, Dave Mustaine guitar that we have is right over here. This is Action Guitar. I think that's pronounced right. It's either Axion or Action. I would imagine A X X I O N. Um, this is actually, it's a little bit weird looking guitar, but it plays extremely well. I really like this guitar. It's really easy to get up to the higher frets. It sounds good. It's got a nice big body that kind of helps out with the tone. Uh, the volume knob is out of the way which I really like. Um, and coming back to this one, I actually had ESP take one of the, the knobs off right here and because I just don't like volume knobs there. I always end up bumping them and turning the volume down while I'm playing. So I had them take that off for me. And as you can see on this guitar, the volume knob is well out of the way of, uh, of bumping it. This one thing I don't like about Stratocasters. Uh, is the volume knob is very close to, I guess I have more of a swinging motion in my playing than some people do. But it's a very cool guitar. Uh, I do play it quite a bit and I um, haven't used it for any recording yet, but uh, probably will in the future. Phoenix? Actually, let's do my other custom V while we're on that one. All right, here is the one other custom that I had ESP make me a few years ago that I've never played live. Um, we were, I put this with the order in for this guitar shortly uh, before we started uh, recording Pray for Villains. And there were some, a couple parts in solos where we started to utilize whammy bars. So I had, this was originally supposed to be a string through body, which I kind of wish I would have just kept. But I had him switch it to a Floyd Rose because I thought I was going to be playing more stuff on live that needed a whammy bar. And uh, those songs we just ended up not really playing. So I've never taken it out on the road with me. If we ever need, a, if I ever need a guitar with a whammy bar on it, this will be my guitar of choice. It's uh, a lot of the same specs as my custom, except it has a reverse headstock which I like because you know you get more tension out of the, uh, the lower string because the length is longer. And uh, uh, it's got a, a quilted maple top, see-through black, which I really like, kind of gives it, you know, can kind of give you a little bit of a brighter tone. And uh, as you can see, I got all the double driver inlays in there, which came out very nicely. And it, it's just, I actually had to have um, Encore cases make me a custom case for this thing because uh, it's about, I think, a half an inch too big to fit in a Dave Mustaine V case. And uh, we couldn't find a case to uh, put it in because it's just, and it, it's, a, it's a big guitar. The body on this thing is absolutely huge. But it's very cool and I like, they did a very good job on it. I do like this guitar a lot. Okay, hold on. Let's do the Rammstein guitar. Okay, as you may or may not know, I am a huge Rammstein fan. Maybe it's because of my German heritage, I don't know. But uh, I've loved them since high school and I still, they're still one of my favorite bands to this day. And uh, they were kind enough to give me uh, Richard Z's uh, signature series guitar, which they're not making anymore. And the cool thing about this one is it's even got the silver EMGs in it, which I've heard can be kind of hard, hard to find. But uh, this was the guitar, I used this when we were recording Iron Maiden's Wasted Years. And uh, Jeff did all the rhythms for that one and I did the solo and this is the, uh, the guitar that I used for the solo on that, on that particular song. And uh, it's a cool guitar, I like it very, very much.
I love all my guitars. I don't think there's one I don't like. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Is This is actually the first guitar I got when I was playing with Double Driver. I was playing my Fernandez when we, my first tour with Double Driver when we were opening up for In Flames in Europe. And uh, we brought this along as a backup and I actually ended up starting playing this. And I was like, yeah, I guess I'll probably end up going with ESP as for my endorsements. And um, it's, uh, I mainly hang on to it and love it just because it's got sentimental value. It's my first time ever being on tour. And, uh, uh, with Devil Driver, which was definitely one of the best two, three weeks of my life on that, on that tour. It was just so surreal being out with those guys. And, and Flames was one of my favorite bands, and being out with them too was just a very cool experience. But it's just a, an LTD, nothing special. All right, let's see. What else do we got? Uh, to one of my favorite guitars, which is also one of Jeff's favorites, is uh, ESP's. These just came out, I think, last year, two years ago, is the Phoenix. And this is the ultimate recording guitar that, in uh, ESP's arsenal, in my opinion. It's just got this huge body. It sounds really good. We didn't use this guitar, this particular guitar, on Beast, but we used it for... Uh, um, overdubs. Yeah, we use it for all the overdubs. The bare knuckle, right? With a bare knuckle pickup in it, correct? Yeah. The bare knuckle, I believe it's the painkiller, is the one that uh, had the pickup. Now it has a pair of EMG 81s. I haven't put the bare knuckle back in a guitar yet. I'm going to put it in one of my uh, clips eventually, but just haven't gotten around to it. But it's just a really cool guitar. The only thing I don't, it's a little hard to get it used to, is you kind of have to, it's like playing an explorer. Um, it's, you have to kind of move your hands slightly to the left a little bit from where you would, you know, as opposed to the view of the Eclipse guitars. So it's a little bit awkward at first. Um, it has a reverse headstock on it, which I really like, but that's also why I have to, you have to um, put some foam in there to, uh, because the, these strings will definitely ring out if you're doing some, you know, kind of things and you can hear them ring. So I always keep some foam in there to uh, keep it nice and quiet. But uh, when I'm at home and I'm recording music in my studio, this is the guitar I always go to. All right, let's see back here. All right, actually, one other guitar that I have that's not an ESP is the Laguna. Uh, my friend is a photographer for Guitar Center, and this is their brand. And they offered to give me a guitar if I, you know, when they first came out with this line if I would just simply tell them what I liked and what I didn't like about it. And they gave me the guitar, and then they never asked me for my review on it. <laughs> so I just kept it. And um, I have this tuned into E standard, which I personally never play in, but I give guitar lessons when I'm at home, and I have a few students that play in E, so whenever I'm giving lessons, I just break this guitar out. And I don't use it for anything other than guitar lessons. It's the only time I ever use it. Okay? Coming? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. A little, little concern for a second. <laughs> All right. All right, moving on. Let's see, we got, I got a few X-Tones here. First one I got was this one. <clears throat> I know Slim from Barrier Dead. He likes to put EMG 81s in this thing and use these things live. Uh, I've used this for recording a couple times. You know, it's really cool for like some clean tones. Get more of a, oh, you know, it's a hollow body, so. You can get a slightly different tone out of it. It also has passive pickups in it, and in it to to uh, when I'm doing clean tones, I have a tendency to like passive pickups better than the MGs. And uh, yeah, it's a cool little guitar to have in your arsenal. Next up is the uh, semi-acoustic X tone. It's not in tune right now, but. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it has a piezo pickup in it, and uh, you know you can still plug in. And this is before uh, ESP started releasing acoustics again. This is the closest thing you can get to a kind of an acoustic from uh, ESP. And recently, I just got my first acoustic, other than the uh, the POS guitar that I got when I was like eight. Uh, they just gave me and Jeff a couple of these things, and. Uh, 
I do, uh, I don't have a whole lot of experience with acoustics, but I like it. It's a cool sounding guitar. It's got a little tuner on it, which, uh, you know, you just you want to tune your guitar, you just turn it on and tune it that way. And uh, you can also plug it in. And it has a, uh, you know, it's got a little volume and two band EQ on it. Um, I just got this about a week ago, so I haven't really had a whole lot of time to experiment with it. Okay, next up, let's see. Seven string. Seven string. This is um, the only seven string that I've gotten from ESP so far. Um, they loaned us one for that uh, I ended up giving back to them because they uh, they needed it. Um, basically, this, uh, the same guitar as this, but it was black and it was an ESP, not an LTD that we used to record talents out on Beast. This guitar was used to uh, record Monsters of the Deep on Last Kind Words. And uh, it's a cool guitar. I like uh, the only thing that I'm not a huge fan of, but it doesn't really matter because I don't really use this pickup anyway. I purposely lower this pickup a little bit because I just, it kind of just gets in the way. Um, I would prefer it if it was closer to the neck, but yeah, Stefan Carpenter likes it that way and it's his guitar, so he can do what he wants. But uh, yeah, whenever we do seven string stuff, this is. It's been the guy. All right, what else do we have? All right, um, the last one I have here that I haven't showed you yet is the M2, which I have modified a little bit. I was saying earlier how I don't like volume knobs there, so I took it out, drilled my own hole, moved it back a little bit, and now it's out of the way, and I don't buff it anymore. But I do, uh, like I said, I like all my guitars, and I do use this one fairly often. And uh, let's see, last but not least, I do have a couple of basses. Um, first one I got, an LTE. And uh, you know, I just, whenever, the only time I ever use these things is when I'm recording at home. And uh, um, I haven't been using this one lately. I actually haven't used this one in a while. I've got a Miller gave me a while back one of his surveyors right over here. And I've been using this one to record bass at home when I'm working on something. And uh, yeah, nothing special. Just a good old ESP bass. And uh, I believe that's it, and that's my guitar collection. Big thanks to ESP over the last few years. They have been awesome, and uh, you know they're uh, responsible for you know basically 95% of this collection, and I can't thank them enough. And uh, check out the MS1 and the, the, uh, the JK1. Me and Jeff's signature series guitars are available now, and uh, that about concludes it for another edition of Gear Geek. See ya.